Sergeant Pilko, thank heavens I found you. I think we have a mutiny on our hands. Corporal Barbella, let's not bother the Colonel. Wait a minute, come in here. I want to hear what this is about. Hold it a minute. The Colonel wants to hear what this is about. <laughs> I grew up in, you know, what people call a showbiz family. My dad was a very successful character actor. Um, he cut his teeth on the Broadway stage. And then, as people did in the, in the days when he was beginning, in the late 40s, early 50s to 60s, he became a contract player at Fox, and we moved out to L.A. Then he got the Bilko series and moved back to New York. Um, and then he continued to do movies and theater and live television in New York. And then the golden age of television, for all means and purposes, it ended around 62-ish. And all him and his, the, the Marty Balsams and the Jack Klugmans and the Peter Fox, all his contemporaries moved back to L.A. where television, you know, was recreating itself again. Um, so, yeah, you know, I was telling somebody today, one of the great treats in my house was all I ever wanted to be was a sports announcer. And I only took a drama class in high school because I wanted to get up in front of people. Maybe I should learn how to get up in front of people and speak because the sports announcers have to do that. I took a drama class in my class, had Albert Brooks in it and Ricky Dreyfus and the greatest most inspiring man other than my father I've ever been with, which is John Ingle. He was the teacher that they had bought from Hollywood High, who's now Edward Quatermain and all my children. And, uh, but growing up, you know, let's call it first grade to sixth grade, all I ever wanted to be was a sports announcer. And as a regular kid, went to PS206, lived in Kew Garden Hills. But my house was different than other houses because when I went downstairs to ask my parents to help me with a, you know, I had to do a short story on the mummy or do a report on Christopher Columbus or something, I would be greeted by my dad, Phil Silvers, Jack Carter, Buddy Hackett, and it, you know, it would always be, Mike, what are you, let me do, I'll write the report for you. And Hackett would take it and write, you know, the story of King Tut, and you hand that in, and it's screamingly funny, unbelievably profane, and they're wondering, how did a fourth grade kid write this? <laughs> <laughs> but that's the kind of help I had, you know, in the living room when I would come downstairs for something. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I grew up going to the theater, for which I'm very grateful, and, you know, developed a love for the theater um, and musical theater and straight theater and movies and museums. And, you know, we were a very middle class family. He did not make that much money. I found his original contract for Bilko. He made $350 a week. And no residuals. He's the only person who got residuals uh, that my mom would have to sue somebody for to get now. For some reason, they stopped paying her residuals many, 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 many years ago. It took, is it Jane or Audrey Meadows that was in Honeymooners? Jane Meadows? Uh, that was Audrey Meadows. Audrey Meadows. She had to go to big time court to get what was owed her because they just don't pay you. My mom decided not to do that. It would cost her more than it would to get. But yeah, he took a residual deal because he was working in the theater at night in Bilko during the day. So he took $350 a week. His second year was um, $350, $375 up to four and a quarter, I think. You know, and now, when you compare it to today's, and it was done on one set of wooden bleachers in the afternoon. And those days are, are it is a visceral memory for me, those days. But it was, it was fantastic. When I was, we would go into the city all the time to matinees. And... I remember him taking me into the city, and because he was who he was and had done so much, he could knock on the window of the door of the, th of the theater, and they'd let him in, and he we would go up, and I remember walk being walked into the theater, going up to the balcony, sitting on the stairs between two rows, him putting his arm around me, and he said, Lem, watch this, you're going to see something really special. And it was um, uh, Once Upon a Mattress and a very young woman named Carol Burnett doing her first job, and I knew something really special was happening. There's no question in my mind that wow, she's different than everybody else. And those memories are extraordinary for me. So yeah, I grew up with that. Very, like I said, very simple, middle class, public schools, nothing special. I didn't have any entitlement issues or any of that stuff. But I also was very privileged in that I had all this in my background. I, I, I was able to do all these things that maybe a, a lot of other people couldn't.